My name is Wang Chesam. The title of my FRP research project is the adoption of virtual commissioning for optimizing energy performance of buildings in Hong Kong. My supervisor is Dr. Roger. He has provided so much help and support to me for my FRP project during the process. This project aims to investigate the adoption of virtual commissioning barriers, benefits, and conducive measures in Hong Kong. There are five primary objectives of this project. Firstly, to reveal the development of virtual commissioning in Hong Kong. Secondly, to reveal the common measures, barriers, and enablers to the adoption of virtual commissioning reported in the literature. Thirdly, to reveal the views of facility manager on the adoption of virtual commissioning through the industry. Fourthly, to identify the adoption level of virtual commissioning in buildings through questionnaire survey. Finally, to propose recommendations to promote our CX. Let's move to the methodology. A quantitative research measure was needed for the study. The methodology of the research contains five stages. In stage one, a desktop study was conducted and a list of file six benefit barriers and conducive measures was identified to prepare for a questionnaire that might be used at a later time. In stage two, a focus group meeting was set up to gather quantitative information from various viewpoints of local FM managers. In stage three, a questionnaire survey was carried out to determine the current level of R6 adoption in the buildings and to study the major R6 practice, difficulties, and advantages. In stage four, a data analysis was conducted based on the data of the questionnaire survey. In stage five, the recommendation and conclusion were drawn based on the findings of the data analysis. According to the data analysis in stage four, it has found that better building energy saving and increased building asset value are the greatest advantages of the implementation of RCX. While time constraint faced by operation and maintenance teams is the biggest challenge that struggle the implementation of RCX. It has also discovered that over a building operator training and holding utility program that promote RCX are the most effective method in improving the utilization of RCX. In order to promote RCX, the two measures should be able to perceive or even maximize the advantages and break the barrier of utilizing RCX. For investigation, it is found that Offering building operator training can help to maintain good skills and knowledge and perceive the advantage of better building energy saving and increase the building asset value, as well as breaking the barrier of utilizing R6. Moreover, holding a utility program promoting R6 can help to maximize the advantages and break the barrier of utilizing R6. So it is suggested to offer building operator training and hold utility program promote RCX. Advising recommendation to promote RCX in this project is of the utmost importance. According to Hong Kong Climate Action Plan, Plan 2030 Plus, the building industry is the primary contributor to carbon emission in the city. In Hong Kong, building use 90% or more of the city's electricity. The production of power of the building is responsible for more than 60% of the carbon emission. So achieving energy saving in the building sector is an urgent and essential action. As RCAs can effectively save a great amount of energy and carbon emission from the building sector, which can definitely reduce the environmental impact in the building sector and minimize climate change or other global environmental issues. So it is, is so it is essential to collect data from the engineers or FM manager in Hong Kong to identify the benefit and barriers of RCX, proposing suggestion to perceive the benefit and break the barriers. This can help to increase the adoption level of R6 and reduce the carbon emission in the building center in Hong Kong. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.